مسكوه على طول طلعوه برا فحطوا الهاندكف بايديه There were over 40 charges as I recall but primarily it was material support to terrorism And would you say they use a social welfare activity to win the hearts and minds of the Palestinian people exactly what they do Well, I think this material support statute is a guilt by association statute. I couldn't Google you and find out anything about your work or your background. Is that correct? I Googled this morning. أكثر من ثمانية آلاف وثيقة. الولايات المتحدة لم يكن عندها وثيقة واحدة أمريكية تدين مؤسسة the Holy Land Foundation. The Justice Department is alleging that the Holy Land Foundation is supporting terrorism because they're working with Zakat committees. But we have a long list of projects funded by the U.S. government who worked with Zakat committees. And we have the documentation to show this. And there was not a single charge that the, where the jury was unanimous. So the case was over. We won. But soon after that, the judge asked the prosecutor, will you retry the case? And he says, yes, your honor, I believe that we will. The second trial uh, was held in 2008. And then the second trial was in front of Judge Solis, a different judge from the first trial. And in fact, he let in even more evidence for the government than the first judge. The big difference in the two trials is I think probably the government put on probably too much evidence and overwhelmed the jury with, with too much evidence. I remember in general the evidence was presented probably in a more uh, a simple and logical way based more on the timeline. There were even more burning buses during the second trial. There was a horrible video of people stamping on the American flag that had nothing to do with Holy Land. Except that there were four main differences. Um, the four differences were first uh, the government presented testimony from a man named Mohammed Shorbaji, uh, who was a cooperator with the government. Mr. Shorbaji had gotten into trouble embezzling from somebody unrelated to Holy Land, but he had briefly worked with Holy Land. So the government went to him and said, if you testify against Holy Land, we'll give you a break on your other case. And he testified that uh, everyone in Palestine knew that Holy Land was connected to Hamas, even though he'd never been to the West Bank, and all of his testimony was based on newspaper articles or talking to people. A second piece of evidence was from a Mr. Robert McBrien, uh, who came from the Treasury Department. And Mr. McBrien was permitted to testify in the second trial that it didn't matter whether an entity was placed on the list or not, that under circumstances that he described, contributing money to an organization like that could nonetheless uh, violate the law against material support. The government was permitted as its third piece of new evidence to, to call an expert witness named Stephen Simon, who had been on the National Security Council, who is a well-known uh, expert in the area of um, uh, the Middle East. And Mr. Simon was allowed to testify that the designation of Hamas as a terrorist organization um, helped the United States in various ways, including being able to station troops in the Mideast uh, and also avoiding another 9-11 style attack on the United States. There was another um, piece of evidence. It was actually three documents that the Israelis had seized from Arafat's compound. They, I think two of them were handwritten. Nobody knew where they came from, who wrote them. One of them said something about Holy Land being connected to Hamas. We had objected to those documents in the first trial because they were so clearly unreliable. Their genesis, their, their, the basis for the information in them was, was so uh, poorly set out. The judge had excluded them in the second trial. The judge uh, allowed them into evidence. <laughs> يعني قائم عليها فلسطينيين و... ومسلمين قاموا بتشويه حتى صورة الإسلام. ما كانش في توضيح للقضية الفلسطينية بشكل واضح يعني في المحكمة، ما راحوش على رجال رجال الزكاة ولا ولا ركزوا على رجال الزكاة، ركزوا على أشياء 
لها علاقه بالمكالمات ومش عارف ايش هذول السيكريت ايفيدنس وش زي كذا. كانوا قضيه جنائيه ما قضيه سياسيه ولم يوضحوا البعد السياسي الرئيسي وليش احنا اساسا موجودين في المحكمه. يعني ما تكلموا عن هذه القضيه هم. يعني هذه كانت احدى النقاط الضعف الرئيسيه. The problem we had was that the government hired an expert in the second trial, and the government was able to keep jurors who we didn't want, and they tried to pick a jury that had the least amount of education. Uh, we got rid of a lot of jurors and did, a, I think, a, a really good job, but they ended up with a jury that was um, much more favorable to the government. My name is Mufid Abdel Qadir. And as I look at all these beautiful faces for my dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, I'm extremely proud of you for being here, showing support for me and for Brother Shukri and for Brother Ghassan and for all those people who are seeking justice. This is a poem that I wrote in English, so don't critique my grammar. Wire my brain and bug my tongue and tab my thoughts if you can examine my walk and study my talk and take my dreams with you to scan strip me down and check me out search my past from toe to head capture every call i ever made give your ears to my serious jokes Translate this and make up that just to impress your DC folks. I hear you say giving clothes to naked orphans was a crime. All children of those who died are worth not a nickel or a dime. I should have sentenced them to death for the awful things their parents did. They're nothing but terrorists to be, and none of them was a normal kid. I beg your pardon, your honor, judge. Don't only listen to the other side. I never thought it was a crime to knowingly feed a hungry child. I'm very hopeful that this case, that the Holy Land Foundation case, we will win it. Um, the government has no evidence at all for their claim. I learned that there had been a previous trial uh, which ended in a hung jury and that, that, and that now these, these, were, these men were being retried. So, so I began to read about the Holy Land Foundation and I began to read about Palestine and the history of Palestine. And, and I learned a lot that I did not know. So every day at noon, I started going to the trials. We began some projects there. We organized a, a, an ongoing daily um, protest, which was, which was also uh, feeding, the, feeding the poor out, just outside the federal building. We were giving the same semblance. But it's okay to feed poor people. It's not a crime to feed, to feed people. We, we organized um, buses to come. Uh, and bring people to the trials. We wanted to fill the courtroom with people, and, and, and that, that was successful. There were, the courtroom was usually filled with people. كانت غرفة المحكمة مليئة بالمساندين للقضية حتى أنه اضطروا يعني لفتح غرفة أخرى ووضعوا فيها تلفزيون ينقل يعني مجريات المحاكمة أو إصدار الحكم طبعا الجميع لم يصدق بعد أن كان صدر قرار سابق قبل سنة أنه لم نستطع الوصول إلى قرار الآن فجأة كل التهم أثبتت ضدهم. One by one, guilty, 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 guilty. And my heart fell to the floor and it shattered.
بس على طول صاروا بدهم يكلبش وحطوا الهاند كابس عليهم وهيك واحنا ويك وات يو دوينج وحتى المحامي بيقول لك شو عم تعملوا بس لا هذول هم تيرست و ذير لايك ا فلايت ا ثريت فما بيقدروا يرجعوا على على الدار فهذا كمان شيء تفاجئنا فيه ما حد كان متوقع انه يمكن هذا اخر يوم انه حتشوفي بابا في الدار او او شيء هيك يعني وحكوا لنا بس ثلاث اشخاص من كل عيله يودعوهم يعني حتى ما خلوا الكول فامي حكت يعني ما ما بقدر مثلا اخلي وحده من بناتي ما تودع ابوها فخلي حكيت خلص انتم الثلاثه روحوا ودعوا ابوكم ودخلونا واحد واحد واعطونا مثلا تقريبا 15 سكندز حكونا احضنوه وادعوه وبس انسجنوا بشهر 11 هم في 2008 اخذوهم من المحكمه بعدين في شهر 5 جابوهم ونطقوا بالحكم فالحكم كان يعني صدمه فمرتها اجت طعون المحلفين واحده منهم من الكبار السن صارت تبكي تحكي انا ما كنت افكر هيك حيعملوا 65 سنه و20 سنه و15 احنا كل فكرنا كان يكون الحكم ممكن ثلاث اربع سنين um, you know my dad is not going to basically serve more than 65 or 65 years more than a life sentence in prison like the mind your mind can't accept that on sentencing day my father got up walked to the podium and said the following nothing in my life was as satisfactory as knowing that i could sign a check it was the only evidence you have used against me but that was the most enjoyable part of my life knowing that i could sign a check to assist the thousands of palestinian families who got displaced after their homes were demolished nothing was more satisfactory to me than providing scholarships to hundreds of palestinian students who had high average grades despite their circumstance i said to the judge um that a man named Almari how can that be that someone who pleads guilty and admits to being a sleeper agent for al qaeda is going to get 10 years and the government wants whatever they wanted which was enormous amount for shukri abu bakr who committed no violent crimes who was convicted of providing charity to palestinian children perhaps as far as the government was concerned the wrong children and the judge's response as i recall was something to the effect of well mr almari just did one thing and your client has been a lifelong supporter of hamas and i i was just stunned i've been a lawyer for an american criminal lawyer for almost 30 years and it was the most unjust decision i've ever seen it's like somebody just came up to you and just hit you in the stomach as hard as they could it took all the air out you felt empty you felt um the a sense of injustice had just occurred we appealed Mr. Alashi's conviction to the Court of Appeals in New Orleans. We had raised a number of issues. Uh, we challenged the anonymous witness, for example. We challenged the admission of the gruesome photographs. We challenged uh, a good bit of the government's evidence, and most of it the Court of Appeals said was okay. But it found four errors. Those four errors were the admission of uh, Mr. McBrien's testimony, the admission of Mr. Simon's testimony, the admission of Mr. Shorbaji's testimony, and the admission of those documents that the Israeli soldiers had found in the wreckage of the Palestinian Authority headquarters in Ramallah that the court of appeals decision was well yes all four of those pieces of evidence which didn't come in in the first trial which obviously made a big difference because in the second trial everyone was convicted it was all harmless and that's an outrageous decision and i believe a political decision that we were just not going to win
بعد الحكم واخذوهم على السجن يعني كانت صدمه كبيره يعني الواحد زي مش عارف يفكر انا متذكره انه اول ما انسجن مش متذكره شو صار كنت زعلانه من شيء عن جد رفعت التليفون وبدي احط بابا بعدين اتذكرت انه ما بقدر اتصل عليه طبعا انا فقدت المعيل فقدت الصديق فقدت الحبيب فقدت ال يعني المستشار My father is a family man He loves to gather everyone for breakfast and for lunch and for dinner So every weekend he made sure to get, gather the family and, and make a beautiful Palestinian brunch Now after he left we all eat separate, um, separate times in our own schedule Rarely do we all sit together and eat and this is what he brought us together فراغ كبير يعني حتى انا يوم عرسي اتصل في يوم عرسي ابوي وغنى لي بس بدل ما اكون مبسوطه كنا نعيط انه ابوي يعني خصوصي بالذات ابوي كان ينشد في الاعراس وابوي عمل اكثر من 500 عرس بس ما ما قدر يعني لا يسوي عرس ولا يحضرها احنا He works in a kitchen in the prison, so he gets some money. Instead of using it for commissary, which is stuff that you can buy in prison, um, for example, tennis shoes, he's been wearing the same ones for three years. Um, he would send me the checks every month because he knew I needed it, and by doing that, he's helping my mom. The first uh, you know, check I got, I got um, set aside money to send him a check every month, and I said, now it's my turn. You know, Baba, it's my turn. I, I want to give back to you. And he said, you don't have to do that, Baba. Like, you're my greatest gift. Baba can always put it. Maybe even if my mom didn't talk about this, it's not good to say that she said that she always put it in the face that you're my daughter and your daughter. You know, I tried to do it. Of course, Mama and Baba don't have to do this, but I felt like it's necessary. I don't have a brother or something like that. So I was the child. At the time I was in the past, في فلسطين خمس آلاف يتيم كانت تكفلهم المؤسسة أصبح أولادي في حكم الأيتام أبوهم مغيب في السجون في أرض الحضارة ضغط المرارة آه. في صور إجتني من غسان مؤخرا طبعا بحسه كبر كتير يعني كبر بطل على دقنه مثلا صارت قطنة بيضاء يعني ما شاء الله لكن يعني لو صبغ شعره أسود هلا بما ينسي الشباب أكثر شيء أنا بشتاق له لما كنا نلعب مع بعض أنا كنت صغيرة وهو كان لساته شباب وبيركض ورايا نلعب ونرسم مع بعض كان دائما يورجيني كيف أرسم يورجيني كيف اخذ صور كان يشتري لي اي شيء اشتقت له هو نفسيا و بشوف ابويا وهو لساته شباب ودائما بيبتسم دائما عنده بسمه كبيره و عند بابا وكلهم احنا يمكن لايك ليترلي نقتل بعض على 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 تليفون كولينج هلا صرنا يمكن احسن بس يعني بنعصب او ماي جاد هاو كود بي وات ار يو دوينج بابا از اباوت تو كول اور اف اتس بابا اتس سو فاني افري تايم اتس بابا لايك اوكي وي نو اتس بابا بس اي دونت نو اذا الحمد لله يمكن من كثر الحب لبابا بس ام استاذنك يا بابا انا كمان استاذنك يا بابا أنا حاولت قدر إمكاني إن ما أشعر إن أبوهم مش موجود، مواجهتهم مشكلة لما يتصل أنا أختصر الاتصال حكي معاه أخليهم يحكوا معاه عشان أشعر إنه هو عايش معنا حتى لو هو بعيد جسديا يعني بس روحه وقراراته وبالأشياء هذه نفسيا إنه يشعر إنه أنا موجود بحياة بناتي أكثر شيء أشتاق لي أنا ليلي طويل 
فروحي تميل لشمس الحياة وهمس النغم وضحك الصغار بأرجاء داري ودفء الحبيب بجوف الظلم قد سرت وحيدا عن أهلي شريدا فجسمي رهين واسمي رقم السلام عليكم يا أستاذ السلام ورحمة الله كيف حالك يا ماما كيف أنت؟ الله يبارك فيك يا أمك كيف حالك؟ والحمد لله يا أمي إحنا بخير بس دير بالك على حالك الله يرضى عليك ويسعدك دايما إحنا بدعي لك يا رب الفرج إن شاء الله My dad gets two 15-minute phone calls a week, and he distributes those calls among my mother, my sister, and myself. I have a sister who lives northeast in Connecticut, me in New York, and my mother in Texas. تمام الله الحمد لله انت كيفك حبيبي ان شاء الله تمام الحمد لله طمين عليك يا بابا كيف امورك كيف المدرسه معك حبيبتي الحمد لله عيد ميلادي والله والله انا عارف انا راح اودي لك ان شاء الله رساله وراح اودي لك كارت وراح اودي لك يعني بعض الرسومات اللي رسمتها انا وحتى في كثير اوقات لانه هو بيتصل 6 ونص بالضبط كل ثلاثاء مثلا هذيك المره كنت بسوق والعجل تنفس وراحت على المكالمه يعني تنكدت لانه انا عارفه لسه بقي لي اخرى اسبوع لاحكي معاه. لا ما الو؟ ايه السلام عليكم. عليكم السلام. سوري تو بادر يو بابا يو درايفر. بابا يو نيفر بادر اس. نو اي دونت نو اي ثينك ماما ان شروكس فونز اي دونت نو واي. اوكي اي جست وان مي اي وونت يو تو ميك بي كومفورتبل سوق على مهلكم. Inshallah. I called the prison just to make sure no everything's okay. I'm calling you. I'm I was like, calling I was like, are you guys everything's good? No lockdown? She's like, yes, we're fine. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. It's good to check. It's good to check. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Baba. We'll see you soon. Yeah, take care, Baba. 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 Ye
لما نروح مثلا في الصي في الطياره اوكات ما كانوا يخلوها والاشياء هاي وادويتها بس في السياره نفس الشيء كنا لازم نستاجر زي اكسجين تينك وكانت تتعب كثير فبنفس الوقت لازم نروح بوقت لايك البنات معطلين من المدرسه فيمكن مرتين بالسنه Once we get in, usually we have about four hours with him. So we go inside the prison visitation room. Now, one of the most cruel aspects of this prison is that we cannot touch our father. We cannot hug him. We have not been able to touch our father since 2009. <laughs> I'm <laughs> الحمد لله يعني شكله كان تعبان يعني شوية هو بيخاف لما نتأخر بيخاف بشيل همنا إنه الكل صار معنا إشي وهيك بس الحمد لله طمن علينا وإحنا طمن عليه بعدين خاتو عزيزة إلو تمن السين مش شايفها فعيطت ماما وش بتسيده يس وشاف سيده وسيده طعمة جاجة وشوكولي بكرة حنتصور حكينا ضبطوا حالكم عشان نتصور مع بعض يوم السبت في بكون هناك واحد من المساجين بيشتغل بيصور بيتوس رحنا نشوف بابا ودائما بنروح يعني نفس العدد وامبارح رحنا وفتنا وعادي وبعدين فتنا على زيارة سلمنا على بابا وكعدنا وبعدين نادوا عليه وصارت زي تبهدل فيه وتصرخ عليه بابا حاول يحكي لهم بس احنا دائما هيك واجينا امبارح ما حد حكى اشي حكى طب بدي احكي مع يعني المدير اللوتنت فنادوه وبعدين صار يحكي معاه بعدين انا كنت رحت احكي حكيت معاه قصدك ايش في وزك لازم خمسه قصدك طيب احنا دائما خمسه وزكريا ما يعني هي دازنت كاونت They're like, no, you have to be only five. My father was angry even more. He's like, okay, let's go. You guys are going to go. Father, please, let me go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. He's like, no, you guys are going to go. I can't talk to anyone. Today, we're going to be here. Yes, it's okay. And I'm going to be in a tie. I'm going to be in a tie. I'm going to be in a tie. And this is the second thing that I'm going to be in a tie. I'm going to be in a tie. What are you doing in a tie? I don't understand. But then when I'm talking to you, why is he doing crying? Why is he doing crying? I'm 
سبحان الله يسنا بال يعني كثير قريبه من ابوها بتحب ابوها كثير كثير يعني طبعا مرض هلا انا كانت ما تشوف الا انا وابوها في المستشفى يعني ناخذ مناوبات عن بعض معظم الاوقات انا طول النهار عندها وهو طول الليل ف تاثرت كثير 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 يعني حتى صحتها من بعد ما سجن صارت تدخل مستشفى اكثر تموت بنيتي ولا اكون لها الحضن الكبير الذي كنت اريد ان اكون ماتت وبيني وبينها 850 ميل ثم يموت ابي بعدما انتقل الى هذه الولايه وانا على بعد خمس ساعات في السياره ولا استطيع ان اقابلها فيموت ابي اه أول محكمة حاولنا بنات الهولي لاند فاونديشن كنا نقعد مع بعض و وي ستارتد زي ويب سايت بعد ما انسجنوا هيك عملنا زي يوتيوب بيج وعملنا زي لتل فيديوز كنا كثير نسافر ونحكي عن قضية نروح على زي مؤتمرات ونحكي وكنا مثلا حتى نحكي هان لوكالي لايك على فند ريزنج دينرز وأشياء هيك بعدين أجا وقت المحامين حكوا ما تحكوا هيك أو ما تعملوا هيك هذا حيأثر على ذس وعلى ذس بس ما يعني ففي أجت فترة يعني كثير ما عملنا أشياء زي ما كنا بدنا عشان كنا خايفين. So I talk about the case to everyone. I talk about the case when I go out into the streets and I go to restaurants and you know sometimes I'll talk to just people I meet at different events. Every single person who has heard this story has been outraged. I have spoken at every major Ivy League school in the country, at Harvard, at Yale, at Brown University, at Columbia University. Uh, and as I had the opportunity to speak, I was doing a group in the university, which is Students for Justice in Palestine. We did an event, we invited Miko Polid to come and talk about the Palestinian students in the university. And after I finished, I went to him and talked to him. هو تفاجأ بصراحة يعني خصوصا لما عرف أبوي شو صار فيه. I was I was shocked about what I heard. I never heard about it really quite before. I heard little bits about it, but I didn't really know the full the full scope. And then I began to inquire some more and to get more information. And then I came back to Texas after that, and I met with the families. And over the last two three years, I've been gathering the information, um, all the information that I could find about about this case. Ah, كويس كويس في عندي contract أجا contract من from the publisher. Oh, I have to sign it now. I'll read it and sign it. Alhamdulillah, the surah we have a book. I'm reading through the. I'm reading through the. I was able to meet obviously Shukri's family several times, Mufid's family several times, Ghassan Ilashi's family several times here in Dallas, and just recently, about a month ago, I was able to visit Shukri in prison. I was. Pleasantly surprised and impressed 
by his ability to maintain this, this wonderful spirit, to maintain his, his optimism. We talked about the kids, we talked about the case, we talked about my family, his family, the history, uh, the Palestine politics, I and mean, we talk about everything, you know, like friends do. The only people that get used to it are the people who belong there, and they're there, you see them. There's like... I've got all the material, now it's a question of sitting down and, um, and writing. This is a political case. I think these five men are political prisoners. I think their position right now is very similar to the position of Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. You could see that they were doing a very good job and being very successful. And this contradicts the Zionist narrative, that there is no Palestinian problem, that there is no Palestinian people, that the refugees and the poverty and all of these issues are not true, that Israel has nothing to do with it. They're all just terrorists, it's all a lie, they all want to attack Israel, and so on. So if you have an organization that's decent, that's honorable, that is doing good work, people are going to start thinking, maybe they have a point. Maybe the Zionist story is not perfect. And that's why they've had to bring them down. It was a threat because it challenges the Zionist narrative. And that is the most dangerous thing to do for Israel. That is the most dangerous thing to do for Zionism. And that is the thing that the Israeli lobby fights the most. We appealed uh, the case after the second trial in what's called the Fifth Circuit or one of the the higher courts, and they affirmed the conviction. They said, we agree that the, the jury got it right, so they didn't uh, change the verdict. We appealed it to the U.S. Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court decided they didn't want to listen. The only thing left is, an, is a, another lawsuit that says we didn't get a fair trial. It's called a habeas petition. And what that means is you go back all the way to the beginning, back to Judge Solis, and argue that this was not a fair trial, argue that the lawyers were ineffective, which we all agreed that we were in one way or another, that we, we filed affidavits with the court saying things that we didn't do that we should have done. Uh, what I'm working on, what I filed and what I'm pursuing, it's, it's called a, a 2255 motion, which is under the federal law where after their convictions and their appeals have been denied, it's a way to raise fundamental constitutional errors, to raise new evidence that, that had not been considered before, and to, to ask the court to reconsider uh, the val validity of their convictions. And because this whole case, the whole issue in this case, was whether or not Hamas controlled the Sakat committees. So at the trial, there was no witness presented by either the defense or the prosecution who was a person who actually worked with the Zakat committee. If they had a, a, a retrial, uh, it would be on the same accusations, but the trial would be completely different because at a retrial, the jury would have firsthand testimony from people that would testify that these Sakat committees are not and were not controlled by Hamas. Right now, the lawyers have been able to secure 34 affidavits from different lead, I mean, different board members of these Zakat committees who swear that these Zakat committees gave aid based on need, not on creed or politics, that they were not under influence of anybody. This 2255 petition is the last legal opportunity that these men have to challenge their convictions in court. If this petition is not successful, 
then uh, they have no further legal options. ما إذا إذا القضية في فلسطين نفسها مش يعني مش واصلة لمكان نفس الشيء أنا بشعر إنه القضية هاي مش حتصل لمكان إلا ما تصير تهدى الأمور في فلسطين يبقى الحل السياسي أيضا هذا مستبعد لكنه قائم بمعنى أن تكون صفقة على على مستوى مستوى إقليمي ودولي. We've thought at times that there might be a way to do some kind of prisoner trade. Um, we've not been able to really get anywhere with that. Of course, we could ask the president for a pardon. It seems to me that the only uh, possible outcome for these people is a pardon. And I don't know politically whether a pardon uh, would be in the works by American officials. I would hope that someone, a Justice Department official, whether it's Eric Holder or whomever, would see that there was an injustice done in this case recommend to the President of the United States, whoever he or she may be, and say these men should be pardoned. Okay, and if we don't do a pardon, what will happen? They'll be in the prison, and that's it? I think, you know, their, their best shot would be in a court rather than in the realm of politics because um, we're still in a, you know, a kind of anti-terror. Well, the future of this case uh, will end when the legal options are over as far as whether these men get in, out of prison. Um, it'll either end in a, them serving their time or dying in prison, or the, we may be successful with this uh, uh, habeas or the legal uh, battle that we're still fighting. I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna be convinced that this man will die in prison, that my father will die in prison. That's not gonna happen in my eyes. I can't believe that. I think the way this can be resolved um, has to be through public pressure. So whether people are living here in this country, in the United States, whether they live in the Middle East, whether they're in Europe, people have to stand up, people have to protest, people have to speak up against this. This has to be something everybody talks about, argues about. Is it right? Is it wrong? And bring it to a point where politicians have to listen. Bring it to a point where there is public pressure to at least reopen the trial, if not to you know, throw out the, the, the trial altogether and exonerate them. Dear Mr. President, I have been writing a letter to you year after year. I am 11 years old now. I am one of the proud daughters of the Holy Land Five. My father and four other great men were put into jail for nothing. My father got 65 years. He did not hurt anyone or anything. If anything, he helped people. Now, the favor I really want from you is to free the HLF-5. You are the only one who can do this, and I hope you will. Did you know I have the same birthday as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Maybe that's why we think the same. Come on, Mr. President, we need you. Can you solve this case? I hope you think about this. And please, as soon as you can, thank you. Sincerely, an American girl who wants her dad back.